Hey, how's it going everyone? I hope you're all enjoying your day. So this is going to be kind of a continuation of the previous video on the differences between the classic Secret of Mana and the 2018 remake. If you haven't seen that video, I'll provide a link in the description and in the outro so you can check it out after this. In this video, I'll be covering exclusively game polish and bugs you can no longer abuse. So stuff like stuck bugs or general weirdness would be considered polish, while something like the infinite money or experience bug would fall under abuse. I'll be explaining how to reproduce these bugs, so if you already know how all this stuff works, you'll probably want to speed up the video. Before I begin, I have to credit the sources of the information, which was Game Facts and mostly Flying Omelette. Alright, so let's start with some of the small polish stuff and then make our way to some of the more interesting bugs. On the SNES, it was not possible to fully walk behind a majority of the assets. When walking towards the chimney, you can see and hear the character as if they're walking down steps. This is one of those weird things that doesn't seem to do anything. This doesn't happen on the remake because you can actually walk behind assets. Despite not being able to walk behind textures, there were a few hidden passageways that didn't lead anywhere. So they were mostly useless, although some people may find it interesting. In North Town, there is a small section in the trees to the south of the town you can just run through. This was just interesting since you're not supposed to be able to run through most of the assets in the game. This doesn't lead you anywhere special. This path was not present in the remake. In Matango's N, there is an opening in the wall due to a lack of collision which lets you loop around the outer wall and come out of the door behind the innkeeper. You can't do anything behind the counter, so it was just something interesting to find. Again, the path is no longer there on the remake. However, there is one useful hidden passage which is found in Tasnika. When exploring the castle on the SNES, you can see there is a merchant that seems unreachable since you can't walk beneath the walkway or around the desk. If you hug the southern wall in this room, there will be an opening in the wall you can walk through which lets you reach the merchant. This was not needed on the PS4 because you could just walk beneath the walkway or around the desk. Good thing too, because that hidden passageway is no longer there. On the SNES, you were able to reach Karon's Ferry before you got flamey. You'll notice if you try to go directly from the desert, the sands will push you back. From the right side, if you run diagonally to the top left, you'll be able to run past the sands and reach the ferry. Unfortunately, you still can't reach the Moon Palace early. This was fixed in the remake so that the sand will properly push you back from all angles. When you do come back at the right time and find Karon, you're actually able to target and kill him with spells. Not to worry though, if you leave the map and come back, he'll respawn good as new. This only works on the SNES unfortunately, since you can no longer target him on the remake. Outside of the Wind Palace, there is a small part of the cliff you can get stuck on. Unless you have Flamey, you won't be able to get out. This does not occur on the remake. When using the rope to jump across cliffs, you are able to change the direction of the jump on the SNES, allowing you to get to places you're normally not allowed to go to. If you use the level 5 whip charge attack while facing a different direction, you'll jump in that direction. Using it to cross the intended play space will cause you to get stuck. This can no longer be done on the remake, and the attack just plays out as normal without triggering the jump. In the Fire Palace, you are normally blocked by a ramp and have to use Salamander for a detour route to get further in. On the SNES, you could climb the ramp by using the gloves or a charge attack. This can no longer be done on the remake since these attacks will no longer move you up the ramp. On the SNES, there was a way to get Neko to sell you the items of the last shop you visited. All you had to do was find Neko at his house, ask to trade, go to the sell menu, back out of the sell menu, then enter the buy menu. After you follow these steps, he will sell the items that were available at the previously visited shop. I don't know the exact reason on why this occurs, but it no longer happens on the remake. In Ice Country, there are a few weird things that happen. In Toto Village, the bridge closest to the exit of town lacks some collision on the top. This lets you walk a little on the frozen river. Again, this is no longer possible on the remake. In the map south of Santa's house, there is a wolf hidden in the trees on the SNES. Assuming your screen doesn't already have three enemies, you can see the wolf by targeting him with a spell. If you cast something like Lava Wave, this will outline the wolf for you to see. The wolf is not there on the remake. 
On the SNES, Rudolph also disappears at a certain point in the story. He'll be nowhere to be found at Santa's house after defeating the three lizards in the Ice Palace. He returns after clearing the Ice Palace. Rudolph doesn't run away in the remake. After you get Flamey, you can land on a tiny island near the Ice Palace. This drops you off in front of Neko, where you can make a save or shop. On the SNES, if you make a save here and try to load it, it will just be a black screen. You're able to abuse this to get the 9th Sword Orb, but I had no luck getting the bug to happen. Neko makes your save properly on the remake, so no black screen will occur when you're using it, therefore destroying any hope this trick would work. You can get back into Poda's village on the SNES, although you'll be stuck there as there's no way to get out unless you have Flamey. In order to get back in, you'll need all three characters. Hold up and repeatedly switch characters which allows you to slowly clip through the NPC that is blocking your way. This doesn't occur on the remake since switching characters just changes the camera and doesn't cause your characters to stack. Speaking of traps, you can trap yourself in the soldier's room in Pandora Castle on the SNES. You are able to use the magic rope in this room which teleports you to the entrance. However, when you try to leave, it'll just put you back in the middle of the room. There is actually no way to get out, so hopefully you made a recent save if you tried this out. On the remake, you're not allowed to use the magic rope in this room. In the Moon Palace, you can actually revisit the starry black room after you leave it. Once you hit the crystal orb and enter the next room, you can use the magic rope and it will take you back to the previous starry room. Once you leave the palace, the magic rope spawn point will reset so you can't go back. On the remake, using the magic rope will take you to the current correct entrance. Players can no longer chain cast, which was essentially comboing spells together so your opponent couldn't act, although the damage would max out at 999. On the SNES, you could cast another spell right as one of the animations was starting, which allowed you to chain spells together and stunlock the enemy. The damage would be combined and dealt at the end of the chain. This was useful for defeating bosses and raising your magic level. Not all spells could be chain casted though. On the remake, there was a bigger delay between spells, so you couldn't chain them together. Another useful trick you could do on the SNES was gain infinite experience by killing yourself. How this worked was, you find an enemy that could cast wall on itself. Then you use the sprite to cast a powerful magic that would get reflected and kill your unarmored character, netting you a lot of experience. This was fixed on the remake, so when you killed your own character, you no longer gained experience. Probably one of the most useful bugs in Secret of Mana is the infinite money glitch. This bug is caused by messing with the menu pointers and essentially confusing the game with what is being targeted in the menu. This was commonly done with the magic rope but can be reproduced by using other items. In order for this to work, you need to have three items in a particular order. It's easier when you have only one item at the start, then buy a candy, and then a magic herb. Back out of the cell menu, and then go to your item menu. Put the cursor on the magic herb, and back out of that menu. This time, when you enter the cell menu, the target should be on the magic herb. Sell that, then sell the candy. Back out of the cell menu and re-enter. You'll be targeting the only item left, which is the magic rope. But the game will actually be pointing to something else. Sell the magic rope for a lot of money. This doesn't work on the remake since the pointers aren't remembered when you leave the menu. I gave it a try anyway to see if it would work, And as expected, all the items got sold normally. The next couple of bugs were not very useful, but definitely very interesting in my opinion. The first one allows you to have both the sprite and the girl in the goblin scene due to some oversights in the sequence scripting on the SNES, allowing you to use the cannon to access areas you weren't supposed to get to. In order for this to occur, you have to visit Gaia's navel before going to the water palace for the first time. After being exiled from Poto's village, go find Diluc and his soldiers. Get them to leave and make your way to the cannon outside of Poto's village. 
Since you haven't triggered the events in the Water Palace, you won't trigger the Goblin Scene. But that was enough to unlock Gaia's Naval in the Canyon options. Travel to Gaia's Naval and progress with the game as normal, getting the sprite and the girl. Return to the Water Palace and progress through this part of the story as normal. When you leave and trigger the Goblin Scene, both the sprite and the girl will be in the scene with you. You'll see a second girl coming to rescue you, which is amusing. If you have a second controller, you can actually explore the goblin area, although you can't kill anything or enter any huts. This was not possible on the remake, since the Cannon Brother will only take you to the Water Palace until after you speak with Luca. My favorite bug is the Go 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 bug, which doesn't describe it very well. Here's how it gets to happen. First, you need to skip the goblin scene so the girl doesn't join you right away when you get to Pandora. When you find her for the first time in Pandora Castle, she'll storm out and go to her house. Go into the room she just left and talk to the NPCs. Then return to Pandora and go to the girl's house. If you go upstairs and talk to her, she'll say a couple more things and then disappear. If you talk to her father, he'll say go 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 go, or go 11 times. It appears that the father is trying to say the girl's name, but since you haven't named her yet, go 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 is displayed instead, since that's what's in memory. This is all guessing by the way, so take what I said with just a grain of salt. If you want more info, you can check it out on Flying Omelette's site. Anyway, this isn't possible on the remake since the girl and her father aren't upstairs in her house when visiting her after she storms out of the castle. And that wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. Maybe you learned something new about the classic game that you never knew about. If you guys know of any more bugs that should have been mentioned or have anything to add, feel free to leave a comment. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time!